The Apostles of Jesus, Episode 2, Simon Peter The Apostle Peter, or Simon Peter as he's often called, is the best known and perhaps the most revered of Jesus' original 12 apostles. That notoriety may in part be because of the Catholic tradition that claims that Peter was the first pope. There's certainly no question that he holds a place of prominence in the New Testament, as is evidenced by the fact that it is to Peter, and Peter alone, that Jesus says those famous words, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. We may have a better sense of Peter's personality than we do of any of the other apostles, and his is an interesting one. Peter was your type A leader. Like, for example, fishermen would fish on the Sea of Galilee. It gets really hot and the water temperature is hot, so the fish would go deep in the daytime. So they would fish at night. Peter had been fishing all night, and yet here's some religious teacher who's never been a fisherman, and Peter's been a professional fisherman all of his life, telling him to cast your net out. Well, that's not something that professional fishermen did in the daytime, and yet, credit to Peter's personality, his respect for Jesus was of such because he had seen some of these miracles. He said, okay, that's what you want us to do. And yet Jesus's response to him was to quit your job and follow me for now on you'll catch men. At times, Peter comes off as dramatic. Like when Jesus wants to wash his feet and Peter says, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and head. At other times, he seems impulsive, like when he unexpectedly takes out his sword and cuts off the ear of one of the high priest's servants. There are other occasions when Peter seems less than dependable and lacking in courage, like when he thrice denies knowing Jesus. There is even evidence of Peter's jealous side, like when he expresses envy that John's future will be more pleasant than his own. Of course, there's also Peter's famous denial of Christ, as the most prominent of the original apostles, it comes as a surprise. Peter was forgiven, but every time we deny Jesus by our own sin as Christians, we're doing the same thing. I mean, you know, you want to look at it and say, how could Peter do that? And history tells us that every time he heard a rooster crow, he would begin to cry and it would affect him deeply. So he carried that repentance, guilt with him his whole life, because to him, that was his worst failure, so to speak. Upon close examination of the various accounts, it appears that Peter never actually denied that Jesus was the Messiah, nor does he deny that Jesus is the Son of God. Instead, Peter, clearly out of fear, denies knowing Jesus or knowing about Jesus. It's an unfortunate choice he makes, but perhaps not as bad as is often depicted. Peter's place of prominence seems evident for several reasons. Not only does Jesus give Peter the keys, but Simon Peter is consistently placed first in the list of apostles whenever a list is given in the Bible. On three separate occasions, when Jesus raised a girl from the dead, when Moses and Elijah appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration, and when Christ suffered in the Garden of Gethsemane, The only apostle Jesus allowed to be present and to partake of these miraculous events was Peter, along with James and John, the sons of Zebedee. The three are often referred to as the Apostolic Presidency, or Triumvirate of the New Testament Church, and Peter is clearly the first among equals in this apostolic trinity. One additional evidence that Peter was the presiding apostle in the New Testament era is the vision of a thrice-descending sheet he received while in Joppa. Through this vision, the Lord commanded Peter to take the gospel to the Gentiles. God's choice to give this major revelation to Peter, and to Peter alone, evidences that his calling placed him in a position in which he presided over the other apostles, and therefore over the entire church after the ascension of Jesus. Jesus changed Simon Barjona's name to Peter, which literally means rock in Aramaic. Clearly, Jesus gave Simon this nickname because he knew who Peter was and who he would ultimately become. While much could be said about Peter's weaknesses, his manner of death seems to solidify his reputation as a rock. 
According to first century tradition, at the outbreak of Nero's persecution, Peter fled Rome. As he crested what's now called Vatican Hill, Peter saw Jesus in a vision and asked, Lord, whither dost thou go? To which Jesus is said to have responded, I am come again to be crucified. Peter, feeling ashamed for running from the very fate Jesus had predicted would befall him, returned to Rome and was crucified in AD 64. According to St. Jerome, Peter was crucified upside down because he did not feel worthy to be crucified in the same manner as Jesus. For all of his weaknesses, his impulsivity, and even his occasional lack of dependability, Peter exemplifies the ideal Christian life, one in which the believer constantly grows and develops, and in which he eventually gets to the point he holds back nothing from the Lord.